wisely. You know, using our head once again for more than a hat rack. And harmlessly, through the use of mercy and forgiveness. Hello, welcome to the Simple Not Shallow podcast, coming to you from the very hallowed halls of my kitchen university, where the coffee is always good, but the conversation's even better. (laughs) Mm. And that means this conversation is going to be very good indeed. Oh, well. What are we chatting about this time? Well, Stan Jay-Z wanted to chat about God telling us not to judge. And thank you, Stan Jay-Z, for suggesting such a wonderful topic. Now, if you happen to have a topic that you'd like discussed here from the very hallowed halls of my kitchen university, (laughs) please let me know in the comment section, and we'll get around to it. Okay. Let's kick this one around, shall we? Now, as I began to prepare for this topic, I went looking for scripture passages, went looking through as many as I could find to search out what all might be involved in this topic of judging. See, I didn't want to assume a point of view and then go looking for proof. I rather wanted to go to the Bible, see all it had to say, and then from that information, draw my conclusions. I think that's a very important distinction. Don't you? And yes, I will list all the passages in the description area down below so that you can find them and check them out for yourself if you'd like. Now, even though I did limit myself to the New Testament for this particular topic, I found many passages which do talk about our need to judge things. So I tell you what, Let's take a look at a few of those and see what we can come up with. And these truly are in no particular order. It's just how we're coming to them. See, I found no less than three passages that deal with judging, which in those passages is also referred to as testing and weighing, right? Any and all teachings coming from any and all teachers. And this was to determine if they are from God or not. You know, we need to be able to judge and determine if they are good teachings. Because if they are, they are worthy of us holding on to and learning from. And we need to be able to determine if they are wrong or even evil in nature so we can avoid them. Now, those three passages come from 1 John, 1 Thessalonians, and 1 Corinthians, and those will be listed in the description area. But then I found some passages that also tie this, this, this judging, to how we actually live our lives. For instance, in Romans chapter 12, Paul ties having sound judgment, right, being able to make good decisions, good judgments, to living humbly. He ties it to us not having a higher opinion of ourselves than we ought to have. And I then found one uh, where Peter, um, and this was in 1 Peter, where he ties sound judgment to the purpose of prayer. So being able to make good decisions is important to our prayer life. And, oh, oh, that's not all. I even found where Paul, in uh, 1 Corinthians, says that it was quite the shameful thing that the Corinthians Christian peoples had no one in their midst who was able to judge disputes among themselves, but rather they had to go to a court and have their problems judged by a person not in the community. So yes, it seems having sound judgment is vital to a robust Christian life. And we've seen that what we need is to wisely make judgments about, right? about ideas, 
actions. Did that sound right? We found the things that we need to make wise judgments about, right? Ideas, actions, theologies, the rightness and wrongness of things. Well, actually, we need sound judgment in just about every, every area of life, don't we? So it's not shameful for us like it was the Corinthians. So, do use your head for more than a hat rack, please. <laughs> anyway, now, yes, there are also passages where we are directly told not to judge. So what's that about? Well, also in no particular order, let's take a look at a few of the passages that I found about this. We'll start with Luke chapter 6. Here, Jesus says to be merciful, as the Father has been merciful to us, you know. So, do not judge, so that you will not be judged. Do not condemn, so that you will not be condemned. Part of mercy. Isn't that amazing? Indeed, he says, forgive, and you will be forgiven. I mean, being merciful and forgiving is being contrasted with judging and condemning. Oh, now that is interesting. Now, in the name of tying passages and concepts together, I mean, the Bible must be taken as a whole. It can't contradict itself, right? Well, in the book of Romans, we are told that love does not harm a neighbor. And then, in Galatians, we are told that if we do not love, which he clarifies by saying, if we bite each other and devour each other, well, we need to watch out, or we will be consumed by each other. Loving versus biting, devouring and, uh, excuse me, love versus biting and devouring, and mercy and forgiving versus judging and condemning. Hmm. Most intriguing. Well, now James brings an interesting perspective to this, to the whole judging of others thing, when he says in James chapter 2 that judgment will be merciless to those who show no mercy. And then, a little, in a couple of uh, verses later, he says, For mercy triumphs over judgment. Isn't that amazing? Being merciful and forgiving triumphs over being judgmental. Well, perhaps, just perhaps, more is accomplished through mercy and forgiveness than in becoming judgmental. That is worth a second thought. Hmm? Well, now, this passage from James also, though, introduces another very vital component to this whole judging our neighbor thing. And this is just how important this is to God and how very seriously he takes it. Judgment will be merciless to those who show no mercy. Well, you know, it is interesting to me that just about all the other passages that speak of not judging our neighbor, not judging others, also include this warning. They mention the great importance placed upon this. And, you know, well especially in the light of our last episode, you know, Salvation Lost, where I ran into just how judgmental Christians can become of each other, you know, never mind of anybody else. Well, I think I would be greatly remiss. I would be shortchanging you and the topic if I didn't mention a few more of these passages. Now, the first one I want to mention is in James chapter 4. Here, James says that 
Well, anyone who speaks against a brother you know, or judges him is actually doing so against the law of God. And, he says, God is the only one who actually gives the law, and he is the only one who actually judges it. Now, let's pause for just a second to let that sink in. No, seriously, let that sink in for a second. See, when you go and get all judgmental, you have then put yourself above God. You have assumed God's authority and his role. You have put yourself first. And so you are no longer walking with God. I find that to be a very sobering thought. Don't you? Well, another passage that I want to mention is Matthew chapter 7. Now here, we are told that if we get all judgmental, well, that standard will be used against us. And, you know, this is more than a what comes around goes around type of statement. For Jesus himself is saying that being judgmental comes from overlooking our own faults, our own wrong-headedness, right? Well, we could say, overlooking the evils that are still within us. Now, he phrases it this way. He phrases it that we don't deal with the plank that is in our own eye as we're trying to remove that tiny speck from our neighbor's eye. And so, he says, because of this, the people who are judgmental are indeed hypocrites. Well. I found that Paul sheds more light on this in Romans chapter 2, when he says, here we go, in that which you judge another person, you condemn yourself. For it is then that you despise the riches of God's goodness and forbearance and patience. And he asks, do you not know that the goodness of God leads to repentance? See, when we go and get all judgmental of another person, not only are we judging ourselves and condemning ourselves, but we are doing so because we have forgotten all that God has already done for us. Well, there is one final passage I really must mention before wrapping all this up. And this also comes from Paul, and it is Romans 14. And his statement here, well, I find it to be directly related to our forgetting God's goodness in the last passage we talked about. Here, Paul asks a question. He says, Why judge a brother and regard him with contempt? He then says, for we all stand before the judgment seat of God, and each of us will give an accounting of his own self. Well, he uses the word himself. I said own self. You'll get the picture. But we need to be humble enough to have the realization that we are all in the same boat, right? God does not favor one of us above the other of us above anybody else. See, we all have things we will have to account for. And we won't be able to. Oh, now, that was an interesting thought. I'm going to share it, and I invite you to kick it around on your own if you'd like, or leave it if you don't. But it occurs to me that Jesus' statement in Matthew chapter 10, you know, about being wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove, 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 as harmless as a dove, is a beautiful summary of just how we are to exercise judgment. See, wisely, you know, using our head once again for more than a hat rack, 
and harmlessly through the use of mercy and forgiveness. Oh, and looking at the Romans and Galatians passages that we mentioned, you could say harmlessly is in love. You could say, as we love one another. Or even, as we love our neighbors, as we love ourselves. That is very much worth a thought or two. Well, until next time then, may you be as wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. I'll tell you what, let's pray for each other, shall we? To find ways, especially when we disagree, to do so from a place that's very humble and from a very loving perspective. And may we never get condescendingly arrogant or condemning toward anyone. Well, okay then. Take it easy. Take it slow. And, well, may coffee into your cup always flow. (sighs) Yes, I'm still the poet. (laughs) 